As we continue our summer journey of the Thousand Islands region, we make a pit stop in Clayton, New York. In this two-part segment, we take you first to the Antique Boat Museum. If you haven't visited, you'll want to after we take you inside. The village of Clayton began as an Indian settlement known as French Creek and was first surveyed in 1823. Later, it became known as Cornelia and in 1831 was renamed for Delaware Senator John M. Clayton. It was here in Clayton that the St. Lawrence skiff was developed. The skiff is a rowing canoe that can easily be oared against the current by one man. It can also be carried easily from place to place when water is not available. Low sides, high ends, and a wide beam make it a formidable fishing boat as well. The Antique Boat Museum in Clayton houses examples of all the many work and pleasure craft associated with the Thousand Islands. With over 300 boats, the museum houses the largest collection of antique classic wooden boats in North America. In the launch building, a variety of boats are on display, from race boats to steamboats to cruisers. The Quest for Speed building showcases their collection of race boats. Many of these race boats set speed records and competed in Gold Cup competitions. The largest vessel in the collection is La Duchesse, a 106-foot houseboat once owned by George Bolt and later Andrew McNally. The boat is over 110 years old. Other buildings house small craft, skiffs, sailing vessels, and boat building demonstrations. The uh, purpose of the Antique Boat Museum is, is to capture the essence of boating in the St. Lawrence River in order to look back at the historic buildings of boats, specifically wooden boats here at the museum. We look to put people on the river as often as possible. One of our missions is to, to engage people in being on the water. So we offer uh, speedboat rides on our, on our antique boats. We offer rowing. We also offer a number of different sailing courses. So it's a, a great opportunity for people to come to the museum and, uh, and really learn about boating history and at the same time have the opportunity to get involved and actually be a part of it. Prohibition was in full swing in the 1920s and the museum's collection includes boats like those used to smuggle alcohol across the border from Canada to the United States. This boat would have been a very good representation of one of the period boats that the summer folks who would make attempts to be smugglers just because it was fun and exciting, uh, they would have had access to boats like this the speed of these boats was unrivaled in, in that time. They, they could sustain 30, 35 miles an hour. Uh, they were relatively shallow draft and they would have been very successful in the hands of the right captain. Uh, but unfortunately, the cost of these was relatively high, much, much more than the average fisherman or farmer would make in an entire year. So they didn't have access to these boats, which may have been built locally um, as close as Alexander Bay. So what, ha what would happen was they'd load up a little bit of uh, alcohol in the back of these boats and they'd run out in the dark and they'd run into bad, uh, bad weather, bad rocks, uh, bad locations, not be familiar with their surroundings, and the boats had a very short uh, lifetime. They would end up up on a shoal with no bottom in them. This would also be a very accurate representation of uh, a smuggling boat in the very early 20s. This was a lap streak boat, so it was able to take very, very high seas, uh, ride very smoothly, take a large cargo, and the thing that made this boat accessible is many of the caretakers that stayed year-round worked on the islands at the estates where the wealthy folks would be, and they'd come up from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Prior to that and after that, this boat was then accessible to be used to run back and forth across the river. It was much, much less easy to recognize. It wasn't the shiny mahogany boat that you see running up and down in the summertime. This really looked like a utility, so you could pretty easily pull over to Gananoque or Kingston, load the boat, put a tarp on, and it looked like a work boat just doing the work of the estate. Each year, boating enthusiasts from around the country gather here for a show of their prized antiques during the Antique Boat Show. The show marked its 50th anniversary in 2014, becoming the longest running antique boat show in North America. The boating pleasure craft uh, slowly but surely became part of the scene here because of the tourism, of course. They all had their small steamboats and sailboats and then larger ones 
and they competed competed for the bigger boat and the faster boat than Mr. And Mr. Emery helped found the Frontenac Yacht Club, and they had their own yacht club house uh, on the shoreline at Round Island. The building is still there, and uh, they were a very large membership of everybody that was anybody that came to the St. Lawrence River. Other area yacht clubs include the Thousand Islands Country Club and Wellesley Island Yacht Club, founded by George Bolt, the Clayton Yacht Club, and the Thousand Islands Yacht Club in Iroquois, Ontario. <laughs>